Hello there, YouTubers, and welcome to another episode of Dr. Cassette's workshop. Today we're not in the workshop, we're in the apartment. I got my spare old cheap soldering iron warming up right there. And here I have the Dion Raptor cable TV receiver. This is kind of a nice little unit. It was relatively cheap. Of course, these things are always cheap. And on the back it has two USB jacks. And this enables you to record TV programs, the MPEG-2 transport stream, to USB media. Nice feature. Two USB jacks. Yeah. Once you got the box opened and you can't return the damn thing anymore, you're gonna find a nice little note on the inside telling you that the storage capacity of USB media is limited to 64 gigabytes. You know, my initial plan was to just hook up a, a big old external hard drive to this and just be done with it. And no, you can't do that unless you purchase a firmware update. Well, there are two issues with this. Number one, there is a stupid blue power LED or well it's it's really just a blue LED that's in this switch it does not do anything it doesn't indicate anything I mean to indicate that there is power present you have the uh, the little display it shows the time when the unit is off shows the program when the unit is on in addition when the unit is on there is a green LED up there so the blue backlight for the power button is just always on and the blue LED is just way too bright. It literally lights up the room at night and I'm sick of it. So we're going to be taking that out. Another problem, uh, there is a little door right here. This is for a pay TV decoder card, I think. Um, and this is actually how I found out about the problem initially. When you close the door, there is something wrong in this and uh, it's going to cause the picture to sort of get all screwed up. So I'm thinking there may be some bad solder joints in this because also as this heats up, sometimes the, the TV picture just breaks up. I'm thinking that may be due to bad solder joints, so I guess I really don't have any other choice than to uh, Void the warranty by uh, ripping that stupid sticker to take a look inside and fix this thing. Here is the inside of the unit. I was careful, but still I ripped the stupid seal. Of course, it's designed to rip apart as soon as you touch it, but anyways. Well, there we have the unit. All surface mount components, as you can see, not a whole lot. That you can repair in this if it ever breaks. Power supply, got a, some cheap no-name capacitor right there, so that's probably not going to last all too long. There is the uh, faceplate, so getting to that stupid LED is going to be a bit more complicated than I expected, but we should be able to make it. And then this is what I'm interested in. I'm going to look inside of this can and uh, maybe we can find some bad solder joints in this, or in some of the joints related to this can. First problem's been solved. The LED is out. Quite amazing that such a small little thing can produce that much light. And that's not going to be a problem anymore. Here is the circuit board taken out. Nothing special on there. As you can see, LED display. That's where the LED was. I did uh, trace the circuit a little bit and it seems like this was really just hooked up you know, via dropping resistor right there. It was just hooked up to the uh, power coming into the board. So, not going to matter if we take it out. It's going to lower the power consumption. <laughs> Well, isn't that nice? We now have an actual problem in this. Trying to remove the power connector from the power supply. I broke the circuit board. Yay, look at that. Some nice destroyed traces. Soldering is not too bad on this. It is quite nicely insulated, as you can see. This is obviously the primary. This is the secondary with a transformer in the middle. 
I think I got the little accident repaired well enough. This doesn't look pretty, but this is all I can do in this place, because I literally don't even have a piece of wire in here that I could use to bridge from the connector to the next solder joint, so these fat blobs of solder will have to do. I checked the solder joints on the board, and the thing is, uh, I'm not sure, but uh, on this uh, transistor here, which is uh, one of the power transistors, one of the solder joints may have been bad, may have been cracked, kind of looked like it. So that's this thing taken care of, and I'll now have to uh, very, very carefully try to uh, reconnect this connector without breaking my, uh, my solder joints right there. I now have the tuner module taken out of the unit, as you can clearly see. Managed to get that out without breaking it. But, uh, I'm already seeing something that I don't like, and that is they only applied solder on this double-sided circuit board to the one side of these connectors, not to the uh, not to the other side. As you can see, just have some plain copper right there. So I'm going to take care of that, just for good measure. Then I'm going to open up this can and I'm going to see what I can find in there. Interestingly, they decided to leave one of the screws away, right there. There was no screw holding the board in right there. Well, as you can see, I had to take the tuner can all apart. The aim is to go through and re-solder all the connections going from this circuit board right here to this um, metal framework up on top and all around. And as you can see that is what I have done. Went all around, resoldered all those joints, resoldered the joints in the center. It all doesn't look all that pretty, I will admit that, but um, that should improve the situation. I should probably also go through and check the connections right here. Um, is, uh, the problem is, uh, of course in the factory this is all done with machinery, but since the materials, the circuit board and this metal can are so different, uh, the industrial soldering with, uh, you know, done with machinery uh, usually doesn't work all that well. So probably quite happily touching an, an electrostatically sensitive device here, but Oh well. The tuner module is back together, as you can see. Still looks perfectly fine. I'm not going to mess with this main circuit board. I don't think there is a point because it's all surface mount devices and you can see how tiny that is. Even if I found a bad solder joint, I'm not going to be able to do anything about that with this thing right here. That's way too uh, primitive. So. I'll now put this back together, and then we're going to see if this still works. I now have the receiver hooked back up to the television, as you can see. So let's go ahead and apply power. And, well, turn on itself. No more blue LED, of course. It says on. It's going to take a while. Eventually it should boot up. And there we have the splash screen, so... And what do you know? Still works, and I don't want to get into copyright trouble, so... Uh, let's see, if we now mess around with this door here, we still have problems. Fuck. Still. Well, seems like... Uh, we got a bad solder joint somewhere else, but I guess there is just nothing we can do about that. Let's see how uh, how good this thing really is. I got the uh, the timer programmed. Let's see if that's still there. Oh, it is. Wow. Didn't expect that. The thing is even power outage proof, it seems. I got the cover back on, and uh, if you mess with it, it's going to mess with a picture, but oh well. Thank you for watching, and see you again soon.